Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I was lucky enough to chat with musician John Miller. He's played bass for everyone from Frank Sinatra to Madonna and is reissuing his acclaimed album Stage Door Johnny. But TV fans have, of course, seen him play Dee Dee, the lovable, the lovable Timothy Blaine drug dealer on Amazon's Mozart in the Jungle. We talk about his album, which features witty and unconventional versions of theater standards, as well as his acting career, and much more. It's a fun chat. I hope you enjoy. Is this the great Les? This is. How are you? This this is this is the humble John Miller. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm looking at your your gig list on your website right now, and I think we should swap those those positions maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, you, you might have the wrong guy, <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking out time today. I, I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. I I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Mozart in the Jungle, uh, and then also get to obviously talking about the reissue of Stage Door Johnny. Sure, um, sure. I know you you had done acting really early on in New York and then had kind of moved into or not kind of but moved into musical direction and and such. Can you talk a little bit about where you kind of found the sweet spot between acting, you know, coming to New York with your bass on your back and and then getting in staying into music where the where you found well, that middle ground? Yeah, let me first say this. Let me first give a declarative statement. I'm not a professional actor. The uh, I've always been a bass player all my life. The uh, there was a show, a Cy Coleman show called "I Love My Wife," and I got a phone call. Or this must have been I don't know, maybe 1975. I had worked a lot with Cy as a bass player a number of gigs, a number of uh, albums with him. And I got a call from a casting agent who said, uh, Cy gave me your number. We're uh, looking for musicians who can uh, play and who can quote act, quote sing, quote dance. I said, well, I know my left foot from my right foot. And uh, I, I, I'm a musician who sings like a musician, and uh, I'm fearless. I, I've, I'm not a trained actor, but uh, I would think that most musicians are not. They say, well, that's okay, we're, we're looking for, we want something to be very, very natural. So I said, look, any freelance person that I've ever met, when someone says, would you be interested in, they never have to finish the sentence. Yeah. You raise your hand, you say, count me in. So I said, count me in. And I also gave the names of other bass players who I knew, whether they could uh, sing or, or act. I had no idea. But I said, uh, let me give you names of some other terrific bass players that might enjoy coming down also. I had no agenda, no vested interest. It wasn't like, oh, my God, this is a dream come true. It was uh, something to do for one hour on a Tuesday afternoon. So I uh, I went down, and I uh, when they said, uh, "What's your ballad? What's your uh, what's your up tempo tune?" I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> uh, I happened to have my guitar with me because uh, and again I, i'm not a professional guitar player i uh I'm, I'm self-taught on the guitar and play just for my own enjoyment so i uh i said well it happened to have my guitar with me because i was going to get some work done on it i said can i play you a song that my brother wrote so i sang this song that my brother wrote about henry david thoreau they gave me, I think, a couple of lines to read, 
And the choreographer, I think, just sort of wanted to know if I knew my left foot from my right foot, which I knew very, very well. Um, and then what I wasn't prepared for, they said, uh, would I come down and uh, talk with them in the in in the house where all the composer and the book writer and the director and all the producers were. And they said to me, look, we know you're a very, very busy bass player in town, uh, but we'd like to offer you uh, the role of Harvey and be the music director of the show. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, how, that's how that came about. And, uh, and I knew nothing when I told my actor friends about this. They couldn't believe that uh, someone had just already uh, uh, hired, uh, you know, hired me to be uh, on Broadway and gotten me into equity. And then what made it even more amazing to my actor friends is when uh, a year later, when uh, the three other musicians and myself, when we won the Drama Desk Award, and I said to my friends, what's the Drama Desk Award? <laughs> so that's how that, uh, that's how that acting experience happened then. And uh, and then uh, that was the end of that. I had, you know, I was very, very, very busy bass player, working all the time, and uh, still am. And then about, I don't know, maybe five years ago, around this time, uh, I got a phone call from a casting agent who had seen me in I Love My Wife, and he said, look, we, we're, we're casting uh, the role of this percussionist drug dealer <laughs> in this Amazon TV show, and we've been auditioning fantastic New York actors. But none of them have the look. None of them have the oove. None of them have the gestalt. None of them read like they're a cat that's been playing around for a long time. Would you be interested in, and that's all he had to say, and I said, mm -hmm. sure. So I went down, and uh, they, they had sent me a little bit of the dialogue, and, and my wife, uh, Connie Barron, is a fantastic actress, just gave me a little pointers, and I went down there, and uh, again, something to do on a Tuesday afternoon, different than what I normally do. And uh, I went in, and they uh, vi video recorded me, and I uh, said these lines, and and that was that. No thought about, oh wow, this is a, a dream come true. And then twelve hours later, they called, and they said, "You got the part." Um, uh, can we talk to your agent? I said, I don't have an agent. Uh, so I gave them the name of a very good friend of mine who is an agent, and that's how those uh, four seasons of Mozart in the Jungle came to be. That's great. That's amazing. It almost sounds like a Broadway show in itself. If that's just... right. That's right. Down That's and out right. musicians mad that they're not getting gigs. Meanwhile, all their actor friends are going, you're late for your drama desk award ceremony, <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, it was loads of fun. Uh, um, it was loads of fun. I know for me, uh, there's there's certain cadences of, of lyrics or, or instrumentation and sounds that that thread through all the music that, that really speaks to me. Uh, so that my, my wife can, can hear songs sometimes and be like, well, I know Les is going to love that. Uh, right. When the choir comes in on one of the songs on Stage Door Johnny, uh, oh, what a beautiful morning. The start of the arrangement at the start of that is chilling. Uh, right. Do you remember what that sound first was for you? What what was the first moment where music really struck you in a, in a hey, y'all might all need to give me the room for a minute here. I need to be alone. Well, I don't know if I ever had that moment. You might be giving me more credit than I than I deserve. Um, you're asking me about the the 
the, the particular oh what a beautiful morning or just the when, when you first enjoyed music really really enjoyed music I enjoyed it as as a very very young kid uh, a very young kid my I must have been I don't know four years old and I enjoyed playing the little four string ukulele <coughs> so always self taught but uh, always a uh, you know your classic musical kid uh always singing harmony at an early early age um and uh self taught a little on the i mean self taught she played a little piano uh played guitar sang and uh was always uh, that was that was always my happy place music i always felt uh well sort of protected well loved uh when i was playing music or or singing it was a very very uh restorative peaceful happy happy place for me then uh my brother had gone to Oberlin for a semester, Oberlin College, and one one time he, I was probably like, you know, 16 at the time, um, he came with a friend of his to the house, and a friend had a string bass, and left it there for a while, and I picked it up, I had no idea what I was doing, but something about it just resonated for me and i even remember as a kid being 12 years old walking down the streets in new york seeing a guy with a bass and just my mouth dropped and i just followed this person something about it i was just drawn to and i remember very vividly at the age of uh, 16 walking into my parents room and saying uh, I'd like to study the bass. It is the first time I ever said anything about wanting to study an instrument. So that's what started. That's what started that. And as a kid, I think the the most of the music that was very primal for me then was folk music listening to the weavers listening to burl ives listening to lead belly that kind of stuff and then you know listening to dave brubeck listening to uh so just playing records and just really responding and saying this is really resonating as something powerful for me and I uh, stayed with the bass went to the University of Michigan I got the degree in the string bass and uh, still enjoy playing it as much now as I always have I know when you you said you were surprised when they asked you to come down into the house and, and talk to them about musical directing the show um when you took on that job and that that role, what was the most surprisingly satisfying bit of that? Well, the first thing was the most satisfying is that Simon Coleman had the confidence to offer me that. That was very very flattering. Now remember, this is not your. I love my wife is not your classic Broadway show. The musicians. Uh, I played the bass. One of the musicians played piano, one of the musicians played uh, a guitar, and one of them played drums. Those were the only instruments. And we would appear on stage in costumes and dif for different kind of songs. Um, so it wasn't for me to, and Cy Coleman was very, very hands-on. So it wasn't like your classic music director conducting, music director teaching the vocal harmonies. Cy really knew what he wanted, and my job as the music director was to just make sure that uh, what we established on opening night would be the same every night after that. In uh, talking about the uh, Stage Door Johnny reissue, 
what has it been like uh, kind of digging back through that? Has it brought up memories of the recording sessions or uh, things you wish you'd done different, things that you fell back in love with? You know, how it came about, how it initially came about was, you know, most most smart people have a real vision of what they want their album or their CD to be. You know, I want to do works of this particular composer. I want to do, um, you know, here are the songs that, uh, um, you know, here's here's their particular <coughs> style, uh, songs of a season, whatever. There, there, there's usually a point of view. I had no point of view. All I had was the way these songs came about was me late at night after coming home late at night after schlepping the bass around and working as music coordinator at all the shows, making sure everything was running smoothly. I'd come home late at night 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning, my, my wife Connie and her dog Doodle would be asleep in the bedroom, and I'd be wide awake. <laughs> and many musicians I know play other instruments just for the fun of it. I know a, uh, a wonderful oboe player who plays the bagpipe. I know a wonderful French horn player who, the fun of it, plays jazz piano. So these are things that a lot of musicians sort of enjoy doing, enjoy playing as a as a hobby. With me, it was a guitar. So I would and 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 still is a guitar. So I'd come home late at night. I'd uh, turn on the TV, you know, watch uh, watch some sports or a movie, and I'd just be holding the guitar. And I'd find myself playing a two, three, four chord pattern with no agenda whatsoever. Just playing it for, I mean, half an hour, 40 minutes, just watching the sports. And all of a sudden, from deep in the gene pool, deep in my subconscious bowels, all of a sudden, I found myself singing, uh, I know, a dark, secluded place, or Hernando's Sideway. And then maybe a couple of days later, I'd, I'd pick up the guitar and I'd find myself doing the same thing. And I'd find myself all of a sudden singing, All I Want is a Room Somewhere. That's how all those songs came about. I would no agenda about, oh, I want to do a thing of Broadway tunes. Not whatsoever. That's how they came about. And so doing the album, I had no goal about what I was going to do once the album was finished. Or, you know, was I going to try to make some money with it? Was I going to get it to a, a label? What I, I had no agenda. It was just a wonderful musical experience that I was having <laughs> and having with my pals as well. Uh, so uh, back then, there, there, there was a label called PS Classics. Uh, and I think back then, that was sort of the beginning of labels not being as important as they once were. Uh, so then, very recently, when friends of mine were saying, you know, it's a digital world out there, you should find out about this, and this is something that really a lot of people might enjoy listening to. So that's how it came about that this got reissued now, and I'll be why we're on the phone. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it did, and I'm looking forward to more people getting to hear it. Absolutely thrilled to get to talk to you today, John. Well, thank you. I've still I've realized I hadn't finished out the fourth season of uh, Mozart in the Jungle and forgotten how much I loved uh, Dee Dee as a character. I know. It's just terrific. They gave me great lines. They gave me fun outfits to wear. 
and uh, I, I, my goal was not to shame my uh, my other timpani playing professional friends, so I didn't embarrass them whenever I was playing the timpani. That was that was one of my major goals. I always wonder that in in shows, you know, there's there's times where it's so egregious that you can tell. Uh, this was shot out of sequence or the music's off or, or, or whatever. But uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about Mozart in the jungle was, is how wonderfully done the orchestral scenes are. I agree. And they took, they took a great deal of time, a great attention to detail and uh, the actors who were not, you know, I was the only one that was a professional musician and the actors spent a great deal of time with their respective teachers uh, practicing their parts. So when the camera was on them, it looked really like they, were, they knew what they were doing. It was very impressive. Well, thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You're welcome. Good talking to you. Thanks, John. Bye. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Electric Sweater Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com and electric sweater.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening.